Oh, hello! Welcome once again to Mutual of NYBC's Wild Vocal Kingdom. As Justin Stoney and I continued our travels, we learned that some of nature's beasts inspire awe in our minds, bring a laugh to the belly, and even bring affection to the heart. But regardless of how an animal makes us feel, many animals can help us to sing. Isn't that right, Justin? That's very true, Marlon. And I've been so thankful for our travels together. I've learned that animals make a lot of strange sounds and that those strange sounds can transform the singing voice far more than I ever realized. But we need to explore. We need to take risks. We need to open ourselves up to new noises, to new ideas, and especially, like you say so beautifully, to new feelings. So I await with great anticipation, Marlon, the last stop on our journey together. Today's journey starts with a varmint that every New Yorker knows, whether they like it or not. But while these pests might always seem to be underfoot, they also take our voices to the skies. The pigeon. Great point, Marlon. The pigeon is one of the most valuable animals for stretching the voice, and they make the sound Now, here's how that works. It's a tongue trill plus a tiny oo, or especially w sound. Now the trill portion, that promotes breath support. But the W promotes head resonance and flexibility. That makes the pigeon trills one of the best exercises out there for flexibility, breath support, range extension, high note development, and vocal health. What is not to love about the pigeon? So we're gonna make this sound, the pigeon trill, on an 851. And you'll just take it as high as is comfortable. Here we go. spinning. That's it. Beautiful. Way up in the skies. Excellent. What beautiful pigeons soaring into the skies. What's our second animal, Marlin? Our next critter is one of the most annoying in all of nature. In fact, you could even say they really suck. But Justin Stoney seems to find the good in everything. So let's see what he found in the mosquito. <laughs> You're right, Marlin. <laughs> I, I do try to see the positive in all things. And while I'll admit I don't enjoy a mosquito bite, I do like what they can do for the voice with their neen sound. This neen can give us, well, flagellet, stretching out the voice, lots of flexibility. This can actually really help us to extend our range. We're gonna use the N, that gives us our nasal resonance. The Y sound gives us our tongue fronting so that it doesn't fall back. And the E is, of course, one of two headiest vowels. This also helps us take bright resonances all the way to the top of the voice. So the mosquito can actually help us fly quite high. This is going to be neen, neen, on a 151 slide. And once again, only go as high as is comfortable for you. Use that little N. Good. Nice bright E. Great. 
eight. Two more. Nasty little mosquitoes. So, back to you, Marlin. We didn't have to go too deep in the wilderness to find our next animal. In fact, it was just a walk in the park. Or should I say, a row in the park. It's the duck. You look real sexy rowing that boat, Marlin. And yes, the duck is one of the most helpful sounds of all with its quack sound. Quack, that's iconic for a twangy voice with a lot of bright resonance to it. The KW is also helpful. It brings the sound through some looseness, some decompression. The K also helps with tongue retraction, keeps the tongue forward and tall. The A ah is our twangiest vowel, and then we've got the K at the end once again for the tongue. So that's quack. Now this is another sound to really make sure you're doing crazy enough. Make sure it's really twangy, really, really bright sounding. We're going to start off with guys right here. Quack, 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 and ladies in the same spot. It's going to be low for the ladies and middle for the guys. So here we go with quack. Quack, quack, quack. That's right. Very good. Quack, quack, quack. That's right. Stay bright. That's it. Use your twang. Excellent. Quack, quack, quack. That's right. A few more. And last. Quack, quack, quack. Very, very nice twangy duck. Excellent. Next animal, Marlin. Whether you're talking about animals or about singing, most people would say that Justin Stoney and I continue to make real asses of ourselves. And they're right. But it's never been more true than right now. When we visit the donkey. Uh, speak for yourself, Marlin. But the donkey makes a sort of hee-yaw sound. And this is really great for us because it helps with vocal registration. It's a kind of yodel effect, the hee-yaw head moving to chest, or if you're a guy, falsetto moving to chest. This really helps the mix to move back and forth between registers. It helps us to have greater control over our voice, and it gets us more aware of the events happening at the level of the vocal folds. So we want to try this hee-yaw sound, and we're going to put it to pitches on a 6-1 pattern, guys and gals on the same notes here. Hee-yaw. And here we go. Hee-yaw. That's right. Break. That's right, head to chest. Heel. Good. Excellent, head to chest. Nice. Come on back. A few more. And last one. He -aw. Wonderful donkeys. So, what do you got, Marlin? You animal, you. The final stop on the wild vocal kingdom is a favorite of both myself and Justin Stoney. This big boy has been part of the New York vocal coaching family since the beginning. In fact, this cat holds the Guinness Book of World Records for most voice lessons ever observed by a member of the feline species. It's the Maine Coon. That's right, Marlin. Manny Cooner is definitely very dear to the heart. But Maine Coons, of course, say meow. 
And we're kind of saving the best for last here because what a perfect setup for the voice. M for the nasal resonance. The E is a bright resonance that gets the tongue fronted. Then we open from that heady E to a chesty A vowel moving through the resonance. And then it ends with OO, a heady dark vowel. So it's really the ideal resonance balancer. So we're gonna use that meow sound. And it's going to be this. Meow, 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 meow. We're going to start off with the guys, and then we're going to bring in the ladies as we go. Only go as high as you're comfortable. Here we go. Meow, 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 meow. Right. Very nice. Bring in the ladies. Meow, 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 meow. Beautiful. Keep it legato. Mm -hmm. Coming back down, keep using the M, right, good, meow, 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 a few more. Meow, 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 meow. Well, Manny would be very proud. So thanks, Manny. And thank you, Marlon, because that's the end of our look into all the ways the wild kingdom can help transform our voices. I hope that these creatures have all helped you to grow and have increased your passion and your joy. Be sure to find a great voice teacher in your area, or you can study via Skype with some of the finest voice teachers in all the kingdom by visiting www.newyorkvocalcoaching.com. If you're looking for a vocal course you can do at home, feel free to check out the Voice Lessons to the World vocal course at voicelessonstotheworld.com. And if you'd like free vocal tips sent to you each day, sign up at dailyvocaltips.com. Marlon? It's been such a pleasure to work with you. Any final words for our singers? As we worked with these wonderful creatures here, we realized that of all the animals that dwell in the land, the singer remains supreme. Truly, the singers of the world are Mother Nature's most precious gifts. We hope that all these animals we visited on our journeys together have helped you to master your singing voice. I'm Marlon Perkins. Thank you for watching Mutual of NYVC's Wild Vocal Kingdom. Oh, welcome to Mutual of NYVC's Wild Vocal Kingdom. In our travels through the wilderness areas of the world, Justin Stoney and I have seen some strange animals, and animals making some of the strangest sounds of all. Right, Justin? That's absolutely correct, Marlon. In fact, singers often don't achieve the growth to their voices that they're looking for because they're afraid to release the animal that's inside them. In other words, they're afraid to be as weird and as different as singing